okay guys, um, I wanted to show you something real quick here before I lay this out. Um, now I've been showing you that you've been pulling 15 and a quarter inches to start any wall layout, and that's true. You're going to do it on this outside corner too. All right, this is an outside corner we're building here, uh, but it's a little different on the outside corner. On the outside corner, what you want to do is, and here's your plates. You know, you might think you just hook on here and do 15 and a quarter again. Well, you can't do that on an outside corner. You got to go back to the wall that you installed that started to form the outside corner first. Wall number four, and hook on that wall, okay? So we're not hooking on our plates, we're hooking on the other wall. And this is only on an outside corner. So you hook on the other wall, you make sure that your, your two plates are up tight against this wall, and then you hook on the outside of your outside corner on the other wall, and then you go 15 and a quarter and set ahead, okay? And then you come to 32, Go back three quarters, 31 and a quarter. Alright? So it's 15 and a quarter from the outside of the opposing wall that you already installed on the outside corner. Don't hook on your plates on the second wall of an outside corner, you'll be wrong. Alright, so outside corner, hook on, 15 and a quarter. And what we're going to do this time is we're just going to stretch our tape the whole way down the 16 foot wall, lock it out. And we'll go back to the easy way to remember how to do a 16 inch on center layout. We're just going to slide our tape up here to 15 and a quarter. Okay. And now we can just use the red marks, the 16 inch marks the whole way down. Every 16 mark. We're just making a crow's foot and we're setting ahead. All right. I'm trying to give you I'm trying to give you every scenario that, that you could run into in your basement project. Um, how to start your first wall, uh, how, to, how to go to wall number two and three on inside corners, how to, how to lay out an outside corner. Um, there's, there's only so many scenarios, but I'm, I'm going to try to hit on all of them. So you'll want to watch the framing series from beginning to end. And it's a couple of videos long, but if you don't watch all the videos, you're liable to miss what you need to know, and you'll be calling me or emailing me with questions. And I'm just going to tell you, it's in the videos, did you watch them all? And nine times out of ten when someone calls me with a question about the framing, uh, they didn't watch the video that it was included in, or they missed it. So uh, you're going to want to watch the framing series videos, all of them, two or three times before you begin your framing project. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and finish out this 16-inch layout down to the end of this wall. You can see this wall stopped right before the sliding glass door. We're going to install it. We're going to put it in and completely install it. And then we're going to measure off the end of this wall when it's done, right down here to our corner. And now we're only going to have a short section of wall. It's going to be under 8 feet, and that's how we'll finish it. So we'll have one 16-foot section of wall and one whatever this is here, one 8-foot section of wall uh, to finish it out. Okay, so, and that's how you build a section of wall that's longer than 16 foot. You do it in two sections. Okay, guys, I wanted to show you how you fasten an outside corner. It's really simple. You remember we built wall two. Come over here, you see how wall two ended. It ended on the outside corner with just a two by four, you know, at the end of the wall. Nothing fancy, nothing turned flatways or anything on an outside corner. And then the, the second wall that's coming in, you can see it's just a, a regular 2x4 coming straight up the front here at the end of the wall. All we're going to do is shoot the bottom of our wall to the red line and then we're going to just level up this wall, number 5, with wall number 4. Just get them flush top to bottom and just shoot through the side here. Just like this. And we're just going to pin the two together. Okay, just keep them flush together, and that's it, all right? And then we'll shoot the top of the wall to the red line and the rest of the bottom of the bottom plate to the red line, and we're done. All right, up this end down here, now what we're going to do is um, a 16-foot end right here, and we have a door we're going to have to frame around here. 
Um, and I'm going to show you how we're going to do that. So if you have an exterior door, you'll know how to set up your framing around the exterior door. Um, generally, you're going to have framing going around the whole way around your, your, uh, your exterior door, just like this. It may not be a big slider like this. It may only be a three-foot single door. But it's going to have this framing going around it. What we're going to do is we're going to make our framing match the inside of their framing. That's all you do. You just make your framing match the inside of their framing on the sides and especially on the top. Okay, Our framing is going to be the same level as this header up here. All right, so to start it out, what we're going to do here is we're going to, we're going to measure off our 16-foot wall that we just put in. We're going to come all the way down here, and we're going to go three and a half inches past wall number five. Just like we did on wall number one, we're going to go three and a half inches past so that when we stand up wall number five over here coming towards me, we'll have three and a half inches of meat already built into wall number four. All right, I'm measuring 89. We're going to add three and a half inches to that. So it's 89, 90, 91, 92, 92 and a half. Okay, so we're going to make the plates. We're going to make the plates for the remainder of this wall 92 and a half inches. So Mark will cut us a green and a white 92 and a half. We'll lay out our plates to include this door, all right? And because we're going to have a door in our wall, we're not going to need all those studs in the middle because there's door space here. And I'm going to show you how we're going to lay our plates down and carry out our, our, uh, our framing to line up and match exactly with what the builder put in around this door. Okay, so we got our plates cut from the end of the 16 wall down three and a half inches past wall five. Like I said, when we put our nailers in here, we'll have meat in the corner for our nailers, just like on wall one and two. Uh, now, we have to continue the layout because the 16 foot wall couldn't make it the whole way. We got to continue this 16 inch layout past the end of our wall here onto these plates. Okay, you can't just start here with a 2x4 and start at 16 again. You've got to continue this layout from the original wall. So what you do is send your tape measure back five, six studs, doesn't matter, you at, least, at least four, and hook on to any stud. All right. You're going to have to put one stud on the end of your new plates here. That goes without saying, but that's not 16 inches on the center. That's just for the end of the wall. And since you're hooked on a 16 back there, you'll find your first 16 inch red mark that you can find on your new plates and just start laying out from there. Okay? See, I'm just picking up the 16 inch marks hooked on the old wall. Set ahead. I'm just going to run them right across. So then once this wall stood up and built, the original 16 foot wall framing layout will continue right on to this small wall here that we're putting in now. Alright, and that will be my last one. Okay. We'll go ahead and transfer the marks over to this plate. And you see on the end down here, this is some more of what we did on wall number one, where we had the three and a half inch line that'll match the wall five line. Three and a half inches past, okay? We made our, we divided it in half, put our X's in, all right? Do it the opposite on the white that you did on the green. All right, on your green plate, you're going to want that flat two by four to be facing the wall that's just going to be coming in and butting into it. So that's why I have it on that side of the stud. That makes sense to you. On the white plate, I did the opposite. I put it on the inside because when we flip these plates over and put the wall together, these two will line up. Okay, so what I wanted to show you here was how we're going to line up the framing of the door with
with our new plates. It's real simple. You just take your just take your square, make sure your your plates on the red line, and just slide your square down the down the plate till it hits the framing, and then stop and carry that line over. Okay, and then put your X on the same side as the framing in the door is, which will be on this side. Okay? So there's going to be a stud right there. So when we build the wall, the framing in our new wall will match the framing in the uh, that the builder put in the exterior door exactly. I'm going to do it over here too. Alright? Stick it on our plate. Slide it down until it hits the framing on the door. Right there. Draw your line. Put your X on the same side as the framing that's existing. Okay? And we'll have one on the end here. The one on the end is just put in there to secure the new wall to the 16-foot wall. All right. Now, since we have a door here, all the studs that are marked out here in the middle, we won't be putting in, obviously, because there's a door here. But we, we carry the layout onto the white plate anyway because we are going to have small pieces every 16 inches above our door. That's why we carried our layout the whole way across the door. All right, so I'm going to build this wall and measure these studs. We're going to put one stud in on each side of the door in our new wall, and we'll leave the piece out going across the top of the door. We'll leave that out until we get the wall built, and then we'll install it before we stand up the wall. And I'll show you how I'm going to do that when we get to that point. But for now, we're just going to be putting in the end studs on both sides of this wall. Down here we'll put these in to connect the wall six. We'll put our one stud in on this side of the door, one stud in on this side of the door, and our connecting stud so that we can connect our new wall to wall number four. All right. sounds a lot more confusing than it really is. Again, watch the video two and three times. The light bulb will eventually come on. If it doesn't come on right away, you will get this stuff. It's not rocket science. Okay. Stack my plates up. And I'm going to get these stud measurements from Mark. Just like we did on wall number one. Got to put my tape down on top of the wall and measure up to the floor joists. I'm getting 90 and a quarter. Check it again here. I got 90 and a quarter. Over here on the other side of the door, I've got 90, roughly a quarter. All right, so I'm going to make it an eighth less, so it'll be 90 and an eighth. I'm going to need one, two, three, four, five of them, 90 and an eighth, Mark. Okay. All right, so we'll cut those. We'll get, our, we'll get them laid out. I'll show you how we're going to fashion them into the wall so that we match our framing of our door. Okay? If we didn't have a door in here, we wouldn't be talking about any of this stuff. We would have just continued the 16-inch marks the whole way across and these would all be full studs. All right, but I wanted to show you how you set up the framing and how you position the framing to go around an exterior door that's existing. All right, we'll be right back with you. We'll show you how we're going to stand this wall up and put the header in above the door when we come back. All right, so we got our wall framed up here. You can see I'm standing in a big opening in the middle of the uh, of the wall. This is, this is our door opening. All right, <clears throat> this stud here and this stud here match this side of the door framing and this side of the door framing exactly as you saw me lay that out with my square. Now all we have to do is put the top piece in to match this one. So what we do is we measure up off the floor to the bottom of that header piece, so it's called the header, and it looks like 79 and a quarter. Alright, so I measured up off the floor there, so I have to measure off the bottom of the, of the wall. That represents the concrete. So I'm hooked on the green plate. I'm going to come up 79 inches 
and I'm going to make a line and I'm going to set up okay this is the bottom 79 is the bottom of the of the header so we want to set up we'll come over here to the other side of the door and we'll do the same thing we'll mark 79 and we'll set up all right and now what size piece of lumber is going to go in here it's easy you just measure between your top plate between the two walls I got 72 inches okay I need a 72 inch header and if I measure theirs up here, it should be 72, or real close. And 71 and a half. All right, so their framing's off a little bit. So, you know, we're going to make our 72. Now, I can put my square down here on the floor and draw them lines up. You have something nicer to nail to. You don't have to do that, but your header will be in there nice and straight if you do that. And this is just a chunk of 2 by 4 here. 72 inches. Alright, just nail right through the side here. Try to get two on each side. All right. Now, remember those marks that I put across the top where we continued our 16 inch centers off the 16 foot wall? The reason we did that is we're going to put little chunks of wood in here above our door. All right, these are called cripplers. All right, so we're going to put our cripplers in, and I can see one, two, three, four, five of them we're going to need. And they're going to measure 11 and a quarter. Now we'll square these marks up here and make them easy to see. All right. I'm going to put the same marks on our header, so I'm going to measure off of any of these reference points over here to these lines and then transfer my marks over here. So off the edge of this 2x4, right here we got uh, 11 and a half to the first one. Okay, set ahead. And then I can just go every 16 inches and they'll line up with the other one. 16, 32, 32, 32, 64. Alright. And these don't have to be laser straight perfect. It's just you want to have some wood over top of your door here to nail the drywall to. It's really, really nothing structural going on here. This is not a load bearing wall. Squaring these lines up here so I can see. No glue in there just like that. Just like we're putting studs in a wall. should line up exactly or real close to that existing door frame. see that the inside of our framing matches their sides and across the top and we've got our cripplers in above our door and that's just framing to carry the drywall up and over the top of the door now this could have been a 36 inch door or it could have been a 
you know, a special order door. It could have been an 84-inch wide door. Whatever, it doesn't matter. The way that I made this framing match this existing framing is going to be done exactly the way on any exterior door. In the corner, you can see again, we're three and a half inches past our next wall line. So when we build this wall and stand it in here, guess what? We got a solid two by four in the corner, all ready to receive our next wall. And the two by four beside it will be our nailer for our inside corner for our drywall. So we're finishing the framing as we go.